Hey, this is Yulia and welcome to my channel. Here I talk all things Canada, living, studying, working and much more. I know some of you already got accepted to some Canadian colleges and universities. Some of you have already got their visas. So now it's time to pack your stuff. In this video, I'll be sharing a list of things that you might need when moving to Canada. So if you're ready to pack your bags right now, then keep on watching. Let's start with the basics. Clothes. Should you bring a lot of them or should you just bring something to wear for the first month or two? My answer would be bring something to wear for at least three months. So if you come in in September, then bring warm stuff. You might as well bring your winter jacket with you, but this is a tricky one because let's say you live in a warm country and for you winter is like plus 15 Celsius. And then you come to Canada and it's minus 20 Celsius and you like Oh, I wasn't ready for that. So if you're coming from a warm place, then I would say set a budget for your winter coat. And then when you come to Canada, go get one here. Because there is no point of bringing a warm jacket from Europe when winters are super different. And speaking of winters, bring some warm pajamas. In some apartments, in some buildings, it gets cold at night because people save on hydro. They would set like the hydro to work till I don't know 2 a.m. and then after 2 a.m. it doesn't work so it gets colder. If you are like me and get cold when you sleep then warm socks, warm PJs, some sweaters or hoodies. Other than that I would say just bring your regular clothes but don't try to fit in your whole collection of I don't know jeans with you. First of all, you're probably not gonna wear all of this stuff because A, when you move to a new country, most likely your style will change. Even though I was one of those people who said, no, I'm gonna wear the same stuff, like I'm good, I don't need to like, you know, buy new things, I ended up buying new things. Because when I started studying, let's say, I needed a white t-shirt, black pants, because I had to volunteer a lot, so I was like, okay, sure, let's go shopping. You can always go back home after a year or two and bring the rest of your belongings back to Canada. So there's no point of bringing everything you have when you're just, like, flying to Canada. The second section, I guess, of stuff that you should bring with you is personal hygiene, different, like, bottles, hair care, skin care, all the kind of stuff. So, when you move into a new country, don't bring full-size bottles. A, they're gonna take so much space in your luggage. B, you can buy them in a new country. I'm pretty sure if you move into Canada, you have money to get a new shampoo for like $3. So, don't bring all this, you know, huge bottles, unless it's something like, I don't know, prescribed or that's the only shampoo that works for your hair, then sure thing, take it. I used to have a shampoo for my platinum blonde and it was the best shampoo ever and I could only get it in Russia, so I had to bring it with me. But other than that, don't waste your luggage space on different, like, bottles. Just bring your toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, they don't take much space. Take some shampoos, conditioners, like hair care for like two, three weeks maybe maximum, so like tiny bottles will work, then you'll get new ones. If somehow you have these huge bottles at home and you're like, but I've just bought my favorite shampoo, well, the answer is travel bottles. Get a set with like different kinds of bottles where you can put all your like toners, I don't know, something you need to spray, your face wash, stuff like that. As for the makeup, my dear ladies and gentlemen, we have Sephora here, we have a lot of online stores. If you move into the US, they have Ulta, so I'm pretty sure you will find your favorite lipstick or lip gloss there, so no need to bring a lot of stuff with you. But also, who's gonna put makeup at 7 a.m. in the morning when you go into a college? Not me. Another group of products that you should be aware of is your pills, is your medical things. If you have something prescribed to you, if it's, I don't know, birth control, contacts, if it's some pills from, I don't know, your thyroids, then don't forget to bring those with you for at least three months 
but also don't forget to bring your prescription. Because if you're going through the border and you have a whole lot of different like pills, especially if they're in a different language, the officers might be, what are you bringing to Canada? Are those drugs? And you'll be like, no, sir, this is my prescription. I have ABC, so here's the proof. Again, you can always get a prescription when you come to Canada. You can go to a doctor, you can get a family doctor, and then they're gonna prescribe you things. So make sure you have your medications for at least three or four months. Another pile of things to mention here is papers. Don't forget your papers, friends. First of all, your passport. If you have multiple passports, like I do, bring both if you have any visas there or stuff like that. Second of all, flight tickets. If you don't have those, you won't get on the airplane and won't come to Canada, so don't forget those. Thing number three is your visa. Whether it's a PR letter, PR visa, work visa, student visa, don't forget that. You'll get your study work permit at the airport, but you need to come to Canada with something. So passport with a visa, go together. And don't forget to make some copies of your documents in case something happens and you lose your passport. Well, at least you have a copy saying, me is me, this is my passport and I've lost it. You can make the colored ones, you can put one, let's say, in your backpack, another one in your luggage, so in case something happens to your passport, you can always pull up a copy and be like, well, I mean, here's my passport. If you are a student who's coming to Canada to study, don't forget to print out your acceptance letter so the officer will know that this is Yulia, she's coming here to study here, this is her program, that's the duration, so in case they need to verify some information with you, you will show this letter and the officer can take all the info from it. Another thing that you can bring with you to Canada or to another country is your driver's license. If you have experience driving in your home country, well, first of all, check if Canada or rather the province have an agreement with your country. Therefore, you will know what document you need to bring in order to exchange your license. This is basically what I did because I had, I think, five years of driving experience. So I had to get a translation and then exchange my Russian license to an Ontario one which was super easy. I didn't have to go to any like driving schools. I had to pass only like the road exam, so it was super easy. If you don't wanna like pass exams and go to a school, just get your driver's license from your country with the translation, with all the required documents and you'll be like good to go. And some information for my rich people out there. If you have expensive jewelry or you have, I don't know, a Rolex watch, bring all the certifications, bring all the papers you have for these things. Because they can stop you at the border and ask questions and if you can't show the proof that it's yours, that you paid for it, that you paid, I don't know, taxes, all that kind of stuff, then you might have some problems entering Canada. But I guess if we all come into Canada to study, huh, what kind of frolics are we talking about, right? And the last category is gadgets. First of all, don't forget your phone. It's better to get an unlocked one so you can basically come to Canada, get a SIM card, insert it and then use it. If you want to get like, you know, all this phones for zero dollars, well, I have bad news for you because you are new to the country. They won't sell you these types of phones. You need to, I think, live for some time, have a credit card, all this, you know, Canadian stuff. So get an unlocked phone and then you'll get a SIM card when you land here. The second thing is your laptop. If your program requires you to bring a laptop, then don't forget about that. You can always bring a tablet, but again, it depends on your program of study if you're coming here to study. If you're studying IT, well, for sure, you will need your laptop here. If you're studying, I don't know, event management, well, then iPad will work just perfectly. Also, don't forget to bring your power banks, your cables, because if your phone dies at the airport or somewhere, but you need to meet your, I don't know, host family, you need to meet someone, well, then you'll have this and you can charge your phone. I mean, it's super obvious, but some people still forget these things. So get a power bank, get your cables ready and 
go to Canada. The next thing is super important, but if you can't buy it in your own country, it's totally fine. And it's the adapter. In Canada, we have plugs like this. So you need to get all of your adapters so they can charge your things. They sell it everywhere here at the airport, in Dollarama, like any store, even I think like gas stations have them. So if you come to Canada, but then you realize that you forgot one of these, don't worry, go to the nearest store, go to Walmart and get the adapters there. A pro tip from me, bring a pen. I made this mistake, I don't know, hundreds of times. Every time I go somewhere, I'm like, I'm traveling light, but then I come back to Canada. And when you come here, you have a declaration to fill in. If you bring in any food, if you bring in any like seeds, anything. I had to ask for a pen every single time. I mean, I know now it's electronic, the declaration, but you never know what things you'll need to sign, you know? So just put it in your backpack, in your purse. It literally takes like no space, but when you need to sign something, you have a pen. And another pro tip for me, don't bring useless stuff. You know, some people are like, oh, I have a teddy bear that was with me since I was born. Uh, this pillow, I used to sleep on it for like 20 years. You only have like, what, 30 kilograms to bring with you? Are you gonna like waste your space and wait for like pillows and teddy bears? Don't do that. You can always ship things to Canada. It's super easy. It doesn't take that long. When my mom sends me stuff from Russia, it comes in like two weeks max. So it's like super quick, super easy. You can always buy things here in Canada. We have like everything you can possibly think of. So if you want a new teddy bear, just get one here in Canada. And also don't bring food. I know some people miss their countries and they're like, oh my God, how am I gonna live without my grechka, my buckwheat? Well, I have some information for you. If you go to Google and Google Russian store, Ukrainian store, uh, I don't know, Indian store, Spanish store, European store. There's gonna be so many of those. I mean, if we're talking about large cities, if we're talking about tiny cities like the villages, I don't think they will have a Russian store with buckwheat. But if we're talking about Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Ottawa, they all have those kinds of stores and you can buy your traditional Russian food, Ukrainian food whatsoever. So yeah, don't bring food unless it's something dry, unless you have a lot of space in your luggage, but I doubt it because when you move to Canada, you have so much stuff to bring. So yeah, this is it for today. If you move into Canada, I wish you the smoothest move in this uncertain times. I know it might be tough for the first two weeks, but then it's gonna be all right. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.